Welcome to Fun and Friends. I'm Avalon. I'm Sabrina. And welcome to the channel. Um, we are working on Throne of Glass, uh, which is by Sarah J. Mass, and yes. it is fantastic. It is. And um, anyway, recap. A little bit of a recap is that she uh, found that they had a library at this palace, and she wanted to have books, but they wouldn't let her have books. So she wrote the prince a letter saying, give me some books to read, because might as well, since I'm here. And he went ahead and picked some books for her and gave them to her. And then um, she overheard some of the other court people kind of talking bad about her. And <laughs> it made her mad enough where she kind of pushed a flower pot over the balcony that they were standing under and almost hit them. And yep. Because yeah. sass. <laughs> Can't do that. Um, and so we're kind of eagerly waiting for the tournament um, tournament to start. It's kind of like in the, the preemptive stages. And this kind of shows that like he hasn't he he hasn't really to told anybody a whole lot about, about Selena. Her. It's just like she's and everyone's here. just kind of assuming that she's like sleeping with him, mm -hmm. not actually like a part of the tournament. It's just like, yeah. oh, he arrived at the castle with this chick. His mistress or whatever. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it is. Um, and supposedly, from what I heard, and I think I said this last time, this falls into the same, like, realm as, We were talking about this as last time. Court of Thorns and Roses, mm -hmm. but I believe it's a prequel, but don't quote me on that one because I have no idea. <laughs> um, but, yeah. The same realm, yeah. The same realm. Nice. Fun stuff. Okay, chapter nine. Chapter nine. Selena stood before the rosewood mirror, smiling. She ran a hand down her gown. Sea foam white bloomed from her sweeping neckline, washing against her breast from a powder green ocean of silk that made up her dress. A red sash covered her waist, forming a inverted peak that separated the bodice from an explosion of skirts underneath. Patterns of clear green beads were embroidered in whorls and vines across the whole of it, and a bone-colored stitching stretched along the ribs. Women in London must have learned not, not to, to breathe. breathe. <laughs> Tucked inside her bodice was a small makeshift hairpin dagger, which it poked mercilessly at her chest. She lifted her hands to touch her curled and pinned hair. So they let her have a knife? Yeah, it sounds like it. Okay. She didn't know what she planned to do now that she was dressed, especially if she'd probably have to change before the competition started, but skirts rustled from the doorway and Selena raised her eyes to the reflection to see Philippa um, enter behind her. The assassin tried not to preen and failed miserably. It's such a pity you are who you are, Philippa said, turning Selena to face her. I wouldn't be surprised if he managed to ensnare some lord into marriage, maybe mm. even his highness, if you're charming enough. She adjusted the green folds of Selena's dress before kneeling down to brush the assassin's ruby-colored shoes. Well, it seems that rumor has already suggested that. I overheard a girl saying that the crown prince brought me here to woo me. I thought the entire court knew about the stupid competition. Philippa rose. Whatever the rumors are, it'll all be forgotten in a week. Just you wait. Let him find a new woman he likes, and you'll vanish from the whispers of the court. Selena straightened as Philippa fixed a straight curl. I don't curl. think she wants that, though. I think she likes the attention secretly. Yeah, I think she, she does, likes too. To in his eye right now. Yeah. And I feel like that's kind of a backhanded... Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. You're forgettable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's not meant to be an offense, Poppet. Beautiful ladies are always associated with the crown prince. You will be, you should be flattered that you're attractive enough to be considered his lover. I'd rather not be seen that way at all. Better than an assassin, I wager. She looked at Philippa and then laughed. Philippa shook her head. Your face is much more pretty when you smile, Girl, girlish even, far better than that frown you always have. Yes, Selena admitted, you might be right. She sat to, uh, she made to sit down, upon a mauve ottoman. Ah, Philippa said, and Selena froze, standing upright. You'll wrinkle the fabric. But my feet hurt in these shoes, she frowned pitifully. You can't intend for me to stand all day, even through my meals? Only until someone tells me how lovely you look. No one knows you're my servant. Oh, they know I've been assigned to the lover of the prince brought to Rifthold. <laughs> Selena chewed on her lip. Was it a good thing that no one knew who she truly was? What would her competition think? Maybe a tunic and pants would have been better? 
Selena reached to move a curl that itched her cheek, and Philippa batted the, her hand away. You'll ruin your hair. The doors to her apartment slammed open, followed by an already familiar snarling and stomping about. She watched in the mirror as Chartle appeared in the doorway, panting. Philippa curtsied. You, he began, then stopped as Selena faced in. His brows lowered as his eyes trailed along her body. His head cocked, and he opened his mouth as if to say something, but only shook his head and scowled. Upstairs, now. She curtsied, looking up at him beneath lowered lashes. Where, pray tell, are we going? Oh, don't simper at me. He grabbed her by the arm, gliding her out of the room. Captain Westfall, Philippa scolded. She'll trip on her shoes. At least let her hold her skirts. She actually did trip on her dress, and her shoes cut into her heels quite terribly, but he would hear none of the object her objections as he dragged her into the hall. She smiled at the guards outside the door, and her smile burst into a grin, uh, and her smile burst into a grin at their exchange approving gla glances. The captain's grip tightened until it hurt. Hurry, he said. We can't be late. Perhaps if you gave me an ample warning, I would have dressed earlier and you wouldn't have to drag me. It was hard to breathe with the corset crushing against her ribs. Yeah. <laughs> this is the part where she faints. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As they hurried up the long staircase, she raised a hand to her hair to ensure it hadn't fallen out. My mind was elsewhere. You were fortunate to be dressed, though. I wish you'd worn something less really to see the king. The king? She was thankful that she hadn't yet eaten. Yes, the king. Do you think you wouldn't see him? The crown the prince told you the competition was to start today. This meeting will mark the official beginning. Your real work begins tomorrow. Her arms felt heavy as she forgot all about her aching feet and crushed ribs. In the garden, the queer, off-kilter clock tower began chiming the hour. They reached the top of the staircase and rushed down the long hallway. She couldn't breathe. Nauseated, she looked out the windows that lined the passage. The earth was far below. Far, far below. They were in the glass edition. She didn't want to be here. She couldn't be in the glass castle. Why didn't you tell me sooner? Because he just decided to see you now. He originally said his... This evening, he originally said this evening, hopefully the other champions will be later than us. She felt like fainting. The king, or maybe it's because your dress is too tight. Mm -hmm. When I you just see that scene where Keira Knightley falls over the edge of that yeah, castle into the ocean because she can't <laughs> No, breathe. I really can't breathe. <gasps> oh, yes, yes, yes. That might be Elizabeth? quite flattering. Elizabeth! <laughs> 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 when you enter, he said over his shoulder, stop where I stop, bow low. When you raise your head, keep it high, stand straight. Don't look in the, the king in the eye. Don't answer anything about whether you're majest without it, your majesty attached. And do not, under any cir circumstances, talk back. If you ha you'll, He'll have you hanged if you don't please him. She had a terrible headache and left her, around her left temple. Everything was sickly and frail. Um... They were so high up, so dangerously high. Chartle stopped before rounding the corner. You're She's pale. afraid of heights. I think so. She's afraid of heights. Yeah. She had difficulty focusing on his face as she breathed in and out, in and out. She hated corsets. She hated the king. She hated glass castles. The days surrounding her capture and sentencing had been like a fever dream, but she had been she had perfectly visualized her trial, the dark wood of the walls, the smoothness of the chair beneath her, the way the injuries still ached from her capture, the terrible silence that had overtaken her body and soul. She had glanced at the king only once. It was enough to make her reckless, to wish for punishment that would take her far from him, a quick death. Selena, she blinked, her cheeks burning. Chartle's features softened. He's just a man, but a man you should treat with respect. He is rank demands. He began walking with her slower. This meeting is only to remind you and the other champions of why you're here and what you're to do and what, what you stand to gain. You're not on trial. You will not be tested today. They entered the long hallway and she spied four guards posted before large glass doors at the end of the hall. Selena. He stopped a few feet from the guards. His eyes were rich, molten brown. Yes, her heartbeat steady. You look rather pretty today, was all he said before the doors opened, and they walked forward. Selena raised her chin as they entered the crowded room. Oh, I think I'm going to do one more, because that was pretty short. But yeah, okay. But, you know, Chortle totally has a thing for her. Oh, absolutely. 100% has a thing for 100%. her. 100%. I... 
I'm kind of starting to feel myself rooting for him to have I, a thing with her. I don't know. Cause I, I but like, I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence because I like how the, the prince, like, sent books for her. Yes. And how like he's, they both are kind of, like, sassy. So I kind of like that, too. But mm-hmm. I feel like Turtle really cares about, like, her personality. And cares, and he's, actually cares about her. And he's her. not a playboy. Yeah. That we know of. So far. So far. And that's why I think I, like, I am I lean more towards him than the prince. Yeah, because it's not the a prince playboy. prince is, yeah, he's a little womanizer, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> no, whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> uh, chapter 10. She saw the... The floor first, red marble, its white veins illuminated in the light of the sun, which slowly vanished as opaque glass doors grown shut. Chandeliers and torches hung all around. Her eyes darted from one side of the large crowded chamber to the next. There were no windows, just a wall of glass looking out at nothing but sky. No escape, save for the door behind her. To her left, a fireplace occupied most of the wall, and Chartle led her farther in the room. Selena tried not to stare at at the thing it was monstrous shaped like a roaring fanged mouth a blazing fire ble- burning within there was something greenish about the flame something that made her spine straighten the captain stopped in the open space before the throne and selena halted with him he didn't seem to notice their ominous surroundings or if he did he hid it far better she pulled her gaze forward taking in the crowd that filled the room Stiffly knowing that many eyes were upon her, Selena dropped into a low bow, her skirts whispering. She found her legs weak when Chartle put a hand on her back to motion to her to rise. He led her from the center of the room where they took up a spot beside Dorian Howlevard. The absence of dirt and three weeks worth of hard travel had a noticeable effect on his smooth face. He wore a red and gold jacket, his black hair brushed and shining. An expression of surprise crossed his features when he beheld her in her finery but it quickly melted into a wry grin as he looked toward his father she must have returned she might have returned it had she not been focusing so much on keeping her hands from shaking the king spoke at last now that you have finally bothered to arrive perhaps we can begin oh shit didn't you just summon them like minutes ago he's the king chop chop Uh. Should have been there 30 seconds earlier. (laughs) Teleported from one end of the castle to the other. Absolutely. Yep. It was a voice that she'd heard before, deep and raspy. It made her bones crack and splinter. It made her feel the astonishing cold of a winter long since past. Her eyes only Mm -hmm. dared to venture as far as his chest. It was broad, not entirely with muscle, but seemed tight tightly strained with a crimson and black tunic. A cape of white fur hung from his shoulders and his sword was sheathed at his side. Atop its hilt perched a wyvern, open-mouthed and screaming. Not that came before that broad blade lived to see another day. She knew that sword. Nothing was his name. Oh, new thing. No thing. No. New thing. (laughs) What do you think? No, no thing? New Mm. thong. New thong. No thing? I'm going to say New Thung. New Thung? New Thung. New Thung was its name. You have all been retrieved from across Arela for the purpose of serving your country. It was easy enough to tell the nobility from her competitors. Old and wrinkly, each nobleman wore fine clothes and decorative swords. Besides them stood a man, some tall and slender, some burly, some average, all of them surrounded by at least three vigilant guards. Twenty-three men stood between her and freedom. Most of them had enough bulk to warrant a double tick. But when she scanned their faces, often scarred, pockmarked, or just plain hideous, there was no spark behind their eyes. No shining kernel of cleverness. They'd been picked for muscles, not brains. Three of them were actually in chains. Were they that dangerous? A few of them met her gaze, and she stared right back, wondering if they thought she was a thought she was a competitor or just a court lady. Most of the competitors' attention jumped right over her. She gritted her teeth. The dress had been a mistake. Why had Chartle not told her about the meeting yesterday? A moderately handsome, black-haired young man stared at her, though though and she willed her face into neutrality while his gray eyes took her in he was tall and lean but not gangly and he inclined his head towards her 
She studied him for a minute longer from the way he balanced his weight to his left to the feature he'd noticed when his eyes moved on and examined the other competitors. One was a gargantuan man standing beside Duke Parrington, who seemed crafted of muscle and steel and took pains to display it with his sleeveless armor. The man's arms looked capable of crushing a man's horse's skull. It wasn't that he was ugly. In fact, his tan face was rather pleasant, but there was something nasty about his demeanor, about his obsidian eyes as they shifted and met her own. His large white teeth gleamed. The king spoke. You are each competing for the title of my champion, my right hand sword, and a world brimming with enemies. A snicker of shame sparked within her. What was champion but a dressed up name for murder? Could she actually stomach working for him? She swallowed. She had to. She had no other choice. Over the next 13 weeks, you shall dwell... 13 weeks? Yeah, that's a long that's time. That's a long time. It's <laughs> a long time. You, you shall each dwell and compete in my home. You will train every day and be tested once a week, a test during which one of you will be eliminated. Selena did the calculations. There were 24 of them and only 13 weeks. As if sensing her question, the king said, These tests will not be easy, nor will your training. Some of you may die in the process. We will add additional elimination tests to see fit. And if you fall behind, if you fail, if you displease me, you will be packed off to whatever dark hole you came from. Oh, so they'll be sent back home. Yeah, she'll be sent back to the mines. Mm -hmm. The week after Yulmus, the four remaining champions will face each other in a duel to win the title. Until then, while my court is aware of some sort of contest is being held among my closest friends and advisors, he waved a huge scarred hand to encompass the room, you will keep your private business. Any wrongdoing on your part, I'll stake you in front of the gates. By accident, her gaze slipped onto the king's face and she found his dark eyes staring into hers. The king smirked. Her heart threw itself backwards and clung to the bars of her ribcage. Murderer. He should be hanging from the gallows. He killed many more than she did. People undeserving and defenseless. He destroyed cultures, destroyed invaluable knowledge, destroyed so much of what had once been good. Bright and good. His people should revolt. He must have been the human king from the other book series that helped start the 50-year war. Maybe. Because there was a human king that was protected during all that because he he was helping Armarithana. I don't remember that much. Because like that. <laughs> I, was, I was mostly focused on the romance part of it. So I'm like, I don't remember that part. But I think he I think he is the one that got like protected during the wrath during this fifty year war thing. So I do think this is a prequel to Thunderglass. Or not Thunder Glass, uh the Court of Court, Thrones. Yeah. I, I do think just by him saying that, I do think that this is a prequel. Anyways. Anyways, back Putting to it as a puzzle. <laughs> Arela should revolt. The way the few rebels had dared to, Selena struggled to maintain his gaze. She couldn't retreat. Is that understood? The king asked, still staring at her. Her head was heavy as she nodded. She had only Yulmus to beat them all. One test a week, perhaps more. Speak! The king bellowed to the room, and she tried not to flinch. Are you not grateful for this opportunity? Do you not wish to give me your thanks and allegiance? She bowed her head and stared at his feet. Thank you, your majesty. I am most appreciative, she murmured, the sound of blending in with the words of the other champions. The king put a hand on new things hilt. This should be an interesting 13 weeks. She could feel his attention up still upon her face, and she ground her teeth. Prove, trust, prove trustworthy, become my champion, and wealth and glory will be yours eternal. Only 13 weeks to win her freedom. I am to part. Nothing. I'll have to say it after because it's going to be a spoiler. I think. I have to say it after. Okay. I'm making a connection here and I just. To, to court? Yeah. Okay. okay. From the very first book. Okay. I think. Because you, you, I just finished the last book, but like so much has happened. Like I can't remember a lot of the stuff from the first book. I mean, I Uh, remember the Tamlin stuff, but. No, this, okay. 
I'm really excited to tell you, but I can't tell you on camera because it's going to spoil it, I think, for other people. But this... Anyways, just go. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> oh. I am to depart next week for my own purposes. I will not return until you will miss. But don't think I won't be able to give the command to execute any of you, should I hear any word of trouble or accidents. The champions nodded once more. If we're finished, I'm afraid I must take my leave. Inter oh, if we're finished, I'm afraid I must take my leave, interrupted Dorian from beside her, and his, her head snapped up at the sound of his voice and his impertinence in interrupting his father. He bowed to his father and nodded to mute counselors. The king waved his son away, not even bothering to look at him. Dorian winked at Chardle before walking from the room. If there are no questions, the king said to the champions and their sponsors in a tone that suggested that asking questions would only guarantee a trip to the values, the gallows, then you have my leave. Do not forget that you are here to honor me and my empire. Be gone, all of you. Selena and Chartle didn't speak as they strode down the hallway, quickly moving from the throng of competitors and their sponsors who lingered to speak to one another and size each other up. With each step away from the king, the steadying warmth returned. It wasn't until they rounded the corner that Chartle let out a deep breath and removed his hand from her neck. Well, you managed to keep your mouth shut for once, he said. But how convincing how convincing was she in her nodding and bowing, said another cheerful voice. It was Dorian leaning against a wall. What are you doing? Chartle asked. Dorian pushed off the wall. Why? Waiting for you, of course. We're, we're to dine this evening, Chartle said. I was speaking to my champion, Dorian said with a roguish oh. wink, remembering how she, he'd smiled at the court lady the day of their arrival. She kept her gaze ahead. The crown bent prince took up a place safely beside Chartle as they walked on. I apologize for my father's gruffness. She stared down the hall at the servants who bowed to Dorian. He ignored him. By the word, word. <laughs> Dorian laughed. He's trained you well already. He nudged Chartle with his elbow. From the way you two are blatantly ignoring me, I'd say she could pass for your sister, though you don't really look like her. It would be hard to pass off someone who is so pretty as your sister. Hmm. Selena was unable to keep the hint of a smile from her lips, but she and the prince had grown up under strict, unforgiving fathers. Well, father figure in her case. Arabon had never replaced the father she lost, nor had he tried to. But at least Arabon had an excuse for being equal parts tyrannical and doting. Why had the king of Adderlin let his son become anything but an identical copy of himself? There, Dorian said. A reaction. Thank, thank the gods. I'm amused her. He glanced behind them, making sure there was no one there before his voice quieted. I don't think Chartle told you our plan before the meeting. Risky on all parts. What plan? She traced a finger along the beading on her skirts, watching it shimmer in the afternoon light. For your identity, you should keep quiet about your competitors might know a thing or two about Adderlin's assassin and use it against you. Fair enough, even if it had taken them weeks to bother to fill her in. And who exactly am I, if not a ruthless killer? To everyone in the castle, your name is Lillian Gordana. Your mother is dead and your father is a wealthy merchant from Belhaven. You are the sole heir to his fortune. However, you have a dark secret. You spend your nights as a jewel thief. I met you this summer after you tried to rob me. I was vacationing in Belhaven. He has a whole story prepared. He's like, I got, I got a backstory for you. Memorize it. And I saw your potential then. But your father discovered your nightly fun and removed you from the lure of the city to a town near Endover. When my father decided to have this competition, I journeyed to find you, and I brought you here as my champion. You can fill in the gaps yourself. She raised her brows. Really? A jewel thief? Chartle snorted. But Dorian went on. It's rather charming, don't you think? Then, when she didn't respond, the prince asked, Do you find my home to your liking? It's a very fine indeed, she said dully. Very fine indeed. Maybe I should move my champion to even larger chambers, if it pleases you. Dorian chuckled. I'm glad to find that seeing your competition hasn't damaged that swagger of yours. What do you make of Cain? She knew whom he meant. Perhaps you should start feeding me whatever per Peregrine is giving to him. Then Dor Dorian continued staring at her. She rolled her eyes. Men of his size usually aren't very fast or very nimble. He could knock me on one punch, probably, but he'd have to be swift enough to catch me. 
She gave Trudel a quick glance, daring him to challenge her claim, but Dorian answered, Good, I thought so. And what are the others? Any potential rivals? Some of the champions were rather gruesome reputations. Everyone else looks pathetic, she lied. The prince's smile grew. I bet you wouldn't expect to be trounced by a beautiful lady. <laughs> this was all a game to him, wasn't it? Before Selena could ask, someone curtsied in the middle of their path. Your Highness, what a surprise! The voice was high but smooth and calculated. It was the woman from the garden. She changed and wore a new gown of white and gold. Despite herself, Selena greatly admired. She was unfairly stunning. And Selena was willing to bet a fortune that this was anything but a surprise. The woman had probably been waiting here for a while. Lady Caltain, uh, Dorian said, tersely his body tensing. I've come for her majesty's side, said Caltain, uh, putting her back to Selena. The assassin might have bothered to care about, uh, the assassin might have bothered to care about the slight if she had any interesting courtiers. Her Majesty wishes to see Your Highness, of course. I informed Her Majesty that Your Highness was in a meeting and couldn't be. Lady Caltain, interrupted Dorian. I'm afraid that I haven't been in, I haven't introduced you to my friend. Selena had sworn the young lady bristled. Allow me to present Lady Lillian Gordon, Gordania. L uh, lady Lillian, meet Lady Cat Caltain Romp Rompier. Selena curtsied, restrained the urge to keep walking. If she had to deal with too much courtly nonsense, she might be better off back in Andover. Caltain bowed and gold streaks in her dress glint glinting in the sunlight. Lady Lillian is from, from Belhaven. She arrived yesterday. The woman studied Selena from beneath dark-shaped eyebrows. And how long will you be staying with us? Only a few days, Dorian said with a sigh. A few years. Oh, only a few, only a few years. Dorian said with a sigh. That's just a bit of a difference. I, yeah, that's why yeah, I had to point it, it out. is quite a bit of a difference. I had to point it out. Sorry. Only, only why, Your Highness? How droll! That is a very long stretch of time. Selena studied Caltain's narrow, narrow waist. Was it really that small, or could she barely breathe in her corset? Women in London. <laughs> she caught a glance exchanged between the two men. Exasperation, annoyance, condensation. The, la the Lady Lillian and Captain Westfall are very close companions, Dorian said dramatically to Selena's delight. Chartle br blushed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> he wishes. He wishes. It will feel short for them, I assure you. And for you, Your Highness, Caltain said coyly, a con concealed edge lingered beneath her voice. Mischief coiled and sprang within her, but Dorian answered, I suppose, he drawled, turning those brilliant blue eyes on Selena, that it will be difficult for the Lady Lillian, and I as well, perhaps more so. Caltain snapped her attention to Selena. Wherever did you find that dress? She purred. It's extraordinary. I had it made for her, Dorian said, casually picking at his nails. The assassin and the prince glanced at each other, their blue eyes reflecting the same intent. At least they had one common enemy. It does look extraordinary on her, doesn't it? Caltain's lips pursed for a <laughs> moment, then, but then bloomed into full smile. Simply stunning! Though such pale, pale green tends to wash out women of pallid skin. The Lady Lil Lillian's paleness is a source of pride for her father. It makes her rather unusual. Dorian looked at Chartle, who failed in the attempt not to appear incredulous. Don't you agree, Captain Westfall? Agree to what? He snapped. How unusual our Lady Lillian is. Shame on your, you, your highness, Selena chided concealing her wicked amusement beneath a giggle. I pale in comparison to Lady Cat Caltain's fine features. Caltain shook her head and then looked at Dorian as she spoke. You're too kind. Dorian shifted on his feet. Well, I dally long enough. I must attend to my mother. He bowed to Caltain, then to Chartle. Finally, he faced Selena. She watched with raised brows as he lifted her hand to his lips. His mouth was soft and smooth against her skin and the kiss sent a red hot line of fire through her arm and singed her cheeks she fought against the urge to step back or smack him until the next meeting lady lillian he said with a charming smile she would have highly enjoyed seeing caltain's face but she dipped into a curtsy well must be on our way chartle said as dorian strode off whistling to himself with his hands in his pockets may i escort you anywhere 
Uh, it was an insincere offer. No, Caltaine said flatly, the facade falling. I'm meeting with his grace, Duke Parrington. I do hope we'll be seeing more of each other, Lady Lillian, she said, watching her with the keenness that would make any assassin proud. We must be friends, you and I. Of course, Selena said. Caltaine swept past them, their skirts of their dress floating in the air behind her. They resumed walking, waiting until their footsteps had vanished from their ears before speaking. Enjoyed that, didn't you? Chartle growled immensely. Selena patted Chartle's arm as she took it in her own. Now you must pretend that you like me or everything else will be ruined. You and the crown prince share the same sense of humor, I guess, or it seems. Perhaps he and I become de uh, will become dear friends and you will be left to rot. Doran is more inclined to associate with ladies of better breeding and beauty. She whipped her head to look at him. He smiled. How vain you are. She glared. I hate women like that. They're so desperate for any attention that they willingly betray the harm and harm members of their own sex. And we claim men cannot think with their brains. At least women, at least men are direct about it. They say that her father is as rich as a king, Chartle said. I suppose that's part of why Parrington is so infuriated. She arrives here in, in a little, in a little bigger than what, than most peasant huts. It was carried here from her home, a distance of almost 200 miles. What debauchery! I pity her servants. I pity her father, they chuckled. And they lifted the arm linked with hers a bit higher. She nodded at the guards outside her chambers as they stopped. She faced Chartle. Are you eating lunch? I'm starved. He glanced at the guards, his smile fading. I have important work to do. Like prepare for the company of men for the king or to bring with him on his journey. She opened the door but looked at him. The tiny freckle upon his cheek moved upward as a smile spread once more. What? She said. Something smelled delicious inside her chambers and her stomach grumbled. Chartle shook his head. Adderlin's assassin, he chuckled, and began walking back down the hall. You should rest. He called over his shoulder. The competition actually begins tomorrow, and even if you're as fantastic as you claim to be, you are going to need every moment of sleep you can get. Though she rolled her eyes and slammed the door, Selena found herself humming through throughout her meal. Ooh. Ooh. I love the coyness that she has with the, the, um, the... Cal Caltaine. Yeah, the other woman. <laughs> well, she can easily match her, I guess, sassiness because yeah. she's just as feisty. Sass sassy. She can so, handle herself. Yeah, she can hold her own, which I think is really good, yeah. especially with this environment that she's in. She needs to hold her own. Yeah. So. Well, and she and she seems to think. I'm thinking that the the assassin that was in the room <laughs> with the dark hair. Yeah. I'm wondering if that's going to be another, like, wrong love. in the love triangle. Because, you know, we caught eyes from across the way. We were supposed to kill each other, but we decided not to. That kind mm -hmm. of thing. Kind of like Hunger Games status. Yeah. I, I could see that happening easily. Then that would be, like, a lot of, like, I don't know. Little, little threads, and then yeah. she has to make a choice. Like, that would be hard. Yeah. That would be really hard. Yeah. I don't know, man. I just can't wait to, like, have someone, like, just with Catlina, Catlina, whatever her name is. Cal Caltrain. Caltrain. Yeah. Just put her in her place, basically. <laughs> Nobody likes her. Yeah. Charles doesn't like her. Dorian doesn't like her. Nobody likes her. Yeah. The only reason that she's around is because she has money. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. Oh, I would hate that. Oh, I, oh, I can't hate. Stand I that. hate the. I. I could. I don't think I could be a lady of the court because I. I'm not sassy enough. I like. I could be, but I don't want to be. <laughs> you know, I'm like the the human doormat. I. I roll over and give up. You're like a chewy. Just <laughs> rub my belly. <laughs> it makes you feel better. I'm not sassy at all. No, I definitely could hold my own in a court, but I. Mm. It's yeah. too much energy, and I don't want to do it. Too much sass. It's, yeah, it's too much. It's just... I can handle it, but I also need my space. Because <laughs> I could get a little much. 
If you're much, then I'm much. <laughs> you want to go there, I'll go there with you, but mm. oh. I don't like that. <laughs> you're also, you you and Jazz are both very, like, mama bear, so, like. Yeah, very protective. <laughs> yeah. So, you guys. For sure. You guys both would, would be sassy enough for me. I'll just be like, hey, yeah, talk to this one. It's like, what's your problem? <laughs> hmm? Oh, I see. It's you. <laughs> you're the problem. <laughs> Anyways. Anyway. <laughs> um, I am excited to see what the tournaments are going to... Well, I guess firstly they're starting with training, and then they'll have the tournament after they've done some training for the week. But I wonder but how... But now we have a little more structure. Yeah. And I like that, And but I'm also still curious to see how they're going to train. I have, like, ideas in my head, but I... I'm curious. I'm, yeah. I'm anticipating how they're going to... How she came up with the I guess like ideas yeah on like how to train them and what would be considered training versus like the real competition I'm so I don't want to like spoil anything for you for uh like court of I think it's not Miss and Fury but it's the last one I'm totally blanking on what it's called but in it, one of the characters is training for, like, the majority of the book. And I'm wondering if it's going to be very similar training this. style to this. this. Like, um, like she had to go and walk, like, 10,000 steps, like, up, mm-hmm. up a staircase and down a staircase. And, like, um, holding a plank for a certain number of minutes and, like, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, and uh, she ends up, like, falling in love with the person who is, like, training her. So I'm wondering mm-hmm. if maybe even the, the person who's, like, semi training her is like maybe even chartle which like would oh. increase their like love connection okay. you know yeah. very similar to to the court books mm-hmm. so interesting yeah oh i'm excited i'm just i'm ready for this <laughs> you're like i want more yeah, i want more <laughs> exactly well let us know what you guys think down below let us know if you're enjoying this this series i thoroughly am <laughs> but give us your like comments and opinions and thoughts and like predictions of what you think might be happening or what you hope to happen or whatever because like, we love seeing your comments and love interacting with you guys and just keep it up and we really do appreciate it and yeah yeah until next until time. next time bye